What's up guys and welcome back to Ben's Big Drive. In the last video, we talked about how to eliminate the wobble from your forehand and give you a clean and consistent release. So if you haven't seen that one, check it out before this one, it'll help you a ton. Today we're gonna talk about what to do once you've got the disc coming out cleanly of your hand and how you can set up your body and your feet to hit those tight gaps in the woods or to park a wide open upshot every time. Let's dive in. Now for the longest time, the best advice I'd heard as to how to aim a forehand was to when you're snapping the disc through, your fingers should end up pointing at your target. Now while this is absolutely true, after hitting multiple trees in a row, I thought to myself, there's gotta be a better way. Why is there so much info out there about how to aim a backhand and so little about how to aim a forehand? Well, I think I've cracked the case. So although every pro has subtle nuances in their backhand form, if you pause their backhand right at that release point, they all look almost exactly identical. No matter how they get there, the position of their bodies at the release point is almost exactly the same. Now compare those same pros at the release point of their forehand. They're all very different. No player has the exact same body position at their release point in their forehand throw. So how do you teach forehand consistency if everybody's forehand release points are so wildly different? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up your feet and your hips depending on your own unique style so that you can hit those lines every single time. Now the key to hitting your line every single time with your forehand throw is to set up your feet and your hips based on your natural release point so that your body is pointed in the right direction to hit that line every single time. So where's your natural release point? Naturally, that's where we have to start first and I'm gonna show you how to find out where that is. Now this is the point at which it becomes a very individual issue. How you need to orient your feet and hips to aim your forehand depends on where your hip box, which is what I'm calling where you start to put power on the disc in your throw, and release point is in your swing. Now if you're someone like me who likes to release the disc somewhat out in front of your body, you're going to have to open up your hips more so to your target than someone who likes to release the disc parallel to their body or behind their body. They're gonna have to close up their hips. So let me show you an example of this with Eagle McMahon and Ricky Wysocki, two of the best forehand players in the world. What's up guys, it's Ben in the booth here, long time no see, and this is Eagle McMahon. We're gonna break down his forehand form. Now the first thing we're gonna look at here is Eagle's release point. Notice how far he's releasing that disc out in front of his body. His fingers haven't snapped through, there is the disc just barely being released, still kind of touching his hand, and he's a good foot and a half, if not two feet out in front of his body when he releases the disc. Now what this means is that Eagle is going to have to open up his hips to allow his arm room to swing through that far out in front of his body. So watch how he plants his front foot here. When his front foot plants, he is almost 100% open to his target, meaning his front toe is pointed almost directly at his line and his hips are open a whole 90 degrees. Now what this does is it opens up his chest and his body to give his arm room to swing out in front of his body and to hit his hit box, which is from parallel to his body to way out in front and to send that disc flying. So here's a video of Ricky Wysocki. I'm gonna do the same thing with him, but notice how much farther back on his body, his hitbox and release point is compared to Eagle. So he's coming through, he's already hammering that disc. Boom, and the disc comes out just barely out in front of his body. Now compared to Eagle, Ricky's hitbox and release point are almost a foot farther back which means that Ricky has to close off his hips so that when he swings his hips through, his hips are influencing and powering that disc when it crosses the hitbox and then finally gets to the release point. Okay, now here's both of their throws side by side and I've done my best to align them both at their release point. So notice how Ricky is already putting that power into the disc. When we get here, Eagle is already well out in front of his body hitting that hitbox which is in front of his body while Ricky is still hitting that hitbox that is behind his body. Now here's just about the release point. Now this isn't a perfect angle from both of them, but you can see that Ricky's arm is just about parallel with his body, meaning that disc is only a few inches out in front of his chest. 
Now, Eagle's disc, on the other hand, is a good foot and a half out in front of his body when he goes to release. So how did both of these throws, even though they look wildly different at the release point, end up both going? Well, the secret is all in the hips. Now you can see right here that Eagle's hips are way more open to the target because he's taken that front foot out to the left, opened it up, pointed it towards the target so that his arm has room to swing through in front of his body. Now look at Ricky's feet on the right side. Ricky has closed that front foot off. His back foot is even to the left of his front foot, which means he is 100% closed off to his line and closed off to the target but he still makes it work because he releases the disc so much farther back in his body. Now what these two throws prove is that no matter where you like to release the disc, whether it be out in front of your body like Eagle or behind parallel to your body like Ricky, as long as you set your hips up in the correct way, you can still throw a great forehand that hits your line and that is powerful. Now these two examples illustrate the biggest problem that I see with players with an inaccurate forehand. It's not that they misrelease the disc or they can't snap it in the right direction, it's that they set up their body and their feet in the wrong direction and the body naturally throws the disc in the direction your body was pointed. So here's an example of the benefit of knowing where your hitbox and release point are and knowing how to align your hips to the target. Now this is a pretty tight fairway here and you can see how I've opened up my hips to my line because I like to release the disc out in front like Eagle does. Now if you didn't know where your release point was or you didn't know how you should orient your feet, you might think that when I line this throw up, I'm going to yank it to the left and hit that first available tree there on the fairway. But I know that I like to release the disc out in front of my body so my hips need to be open so that when my hips rotate through, they'll be on a straight line with the line I'm looking for in my target. Now to quote Paul Uliberry, let's see how it plays out. So I'm making sure that my pull through is going to be straight. Boom, stand still. Nice little ace run, everything's great. So here's the flip side of this. I've now closed off my hips to my line and although it looks like I'm pointed more directly at the target, my release point is out in front of my body. So I know that my line right now in reality is pointed way directly to the right. Now I promise when you watch this throw, it looks like I'm trying to throw it in the woods, but I promise you I am not. Kind of just gave it away. Yeah, so that was really bad. Because of where my natural release point is, if I close off my hips and try to throw it the right direction, that line is going to be way off and way to the right, which means that I need to open up those hips to allow me to come through and hit that line. So which player are you? Do you like to torque the disc more out in front of your body like I do or like Eagle does? Then you should practice opening up your feet and your chest and your hips enough to let those hips swing through forward and sling the disc out in front of your release point. Do you like the more low to the ground arm extended parallel with your body type of throw? Then do what Ricky does and try closing off your stance to your line so that your hips rotate farther back from the target and whip that disc through parallel to your body where your hitbox and release point is. So how does this help you hit your lines and be more accurate with your forehand? The good news is you probably already do this naturally. Your body will naturally orient itself to be the most powerful at your natural hitbox. But to be accurate with your forehand, you have to know where that natural release point is and without this knowledge about how the feet and hips influence where your hitbox is it might be hard to find so now that you know how to find your hitbox and release point you can start making your forehand footwork consistent whether that be in a full power walk up or in a standstill forehanding is a lot like putting every individual has their own unique way they like to throw but just like putting if you break it down from the ground up you can find a way to set up your body consistently that you can practice and that you can refine in a way in which you're way more prepared and way more practiced to hit that line when you go out into the woods or out in an open fairway so make sure you subscribe to the channel for more form videos to help your game like this one and to follow my journey to becoming a pro disc golfer. That's it for this one and follow along for more of Ben's Big Drive. Oh! Follow along for more of Ben's Big Drive. Oh! Oh my gosh, I did the same exact thing. Oh, that was so good, just too high. Oh, that was time too low. That's the one. Oh, you have gotta be kidding me. Now I gotta go find all these in the freaking woods. Two of them are in the creek.
Oh, wow, we're getting worse. And uh, wait 30 minutes after eating before you swim. Oh, come on. You have got to be kidding me. Oh, come on. Go. Come on. Let's go. Finally. I mean, first try. All along from Orban's Big Drive. Two in a row. Oh! Three in a row. He's dialed.